Welcome to Dr. Will's History Road Trip. Tonight we're going to continue our American Biography series and talk about a son of a very famous father who actually had a lot of accomplishments in his own right. I'm talking about Robert Todd Lincoln, uh, son, of course, of President Abraham Lincoln. You know, sometimes you'll see this throughout history. Sons of very accomplished and famous fathers uh, struggle to carve out an identity of their own. And, and we see that a little bit, I think, with Robert Todd Lincoln. Now, he's not as well known as his famous father, but he's, he is a consequential figure in his own right during the Gilded Age. He would become very wealthy while serving as a lawyer for the Pullman Car Company, which made uh, railroad cars. He served very important roles in, in Republican administrations during the Gilded Age, including the four-year term as Secretary of War from 1881 to 1885. His life was also very tragic. He was the only one of his parents' children to survive past the age of 18. In addition to being nearby when his father was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, he was also present at two other presidential assassinations. He had to commit his mother to a mental institution at one point in his life, so his life was rather tragic. So let's talk a little bit about Mr. Lincoln. Robert Todd Lincoln was born on August 1st, 1843, in Springfield, Illinois, to Abraham and Mary Todd Lincoln. He was the oldest of their four sons. He was named for his maternal grandfather, Robert Smith Todd. Now, by the time he was born in 1843, his father, Abraham Lincoln, was already heavily involved in Whig Party politics. And as a child, Robert spent some time in Washington, D.C., where his father served as congressman from Illinois, one term only, from 1847 to 1849. When he came of age and was ready to go to college, he wanted to go to Harvard. In 1859, he tried to get into Harvard, but he failed 15 out of 16 subjects on the Harvard entrance exam and wasn't able to get in. So he instead enrolled at an elite prep school in New Hampshire called Phillips Exeter Academy. He finished that academy in 1860, enrolled in Harvard, and then graduated from Harvard in 1864. Of course, 1860 was a very momentous year for the Lincoln family as Robert's father, Abraham, was elected president. In addition to the heavy burden of leading a nation at war with itself, he's the only president to lead our country through a civil war. The war years brought a lot of personal tragedy to Abraham Lincoln and his family as well. In the spring of 1862, Willie Lincoln, Robert's younger brother, died of typhoid fever. Willie was actually the third of the four sons. The, the, the son that had come right after Robert was named Eddie. He had died of tuberculosis 12 years earlier in 1850. But Willie's death affected the Lincoln significantly. Um, Mary Lincoln was what people in the 19th century would have called high strung. And um, she had a bit of a, um, I guess, a nervous personality and she she might have suffered what we would call a nervous breakdown after the death of her son and it would just get worse with with the rest of the tragedy she would experience during her time as fourth uh as first lady in 1863 or 1864 we're not really sure of the date but sometime late in 1863 or early 1864 robert himself was almost killed he was on a, a crowded train platform and People were bumping up against him, and he fell into the narrow space between the platform and the train. Of course, if, if, if a train comes along right then, he could have been crushed. And uh, at that point, somebody reached down, a hand grabbed his coat collar, this is the way he described it later, and pulled him to safety. Well, when he gets pulled back on the platform, he turns to look to who this hand belongs to, and it belonged to a man named Edwin Booth, who was a very famous actor, and of course, Robert Lincoln recognized him immediately and what makes this even more ironic is that a little over a year later edwin booth's brother john wilkes booth would be the one to assassinate robert's father abraham lincoln and a lot of eerie coincidences like that in in robert todd lincoln's life now robert like i said graduated from harvard in 1864 and he immediately wanted to join the union army but his mother prevented him from doing that uh, she said she couldn't bear to lose another son. She had already lost young Willie. They had lost Eddie 12 years earlier. She just had the two sons left, uh, Robert and then his younger brother, Thomas, who everybody called Tad. Uh, 
Um, but this embarrassed Abraham Lincoln. The fact that Mary wouldn't let Robert go into the army, it makes him look like a hypocrite. How can he ask other families in the North to sacrifice their sons for the Union, but keep his son out of danger himself? Um, he, he eventually reached an agreement and a kind of a compromise with his wife. Uh, President Lincoln reached out to, at the time, General Ulysses S. Grant, who had been put in charge of all Union forces. And in February 1865, Robert was commissioned as a captain in the U.S. Army and assigned to General Grant's staff. And as a staff officer, he's going to be less likely to be in the line of fire, less likely to be exposed to danger. Um, he served on Grant's staff for the remaining two months of the war. He was pres He was at a Appomattox Courthouse when Robert E. Lee surrendered the Army of Northern Virginia to General Grant on April the 9th, 1865. Of course, five days later, Robert's life would change forever. Five days after Lee's surrender, on April the 14th of 1865, Robert's parents, Abraham and Mary Lincoln, went to attend a play at Ford's Theater called Our American Cousin. Uh, it was a Friday night. Robert was supposed to go with his parents, but he decided to remain at the White House and get some rest. He'd been sleeping in a tent on the ground or on a rough cot for the last two months. He decided to get a little rest. And, of course, you know what happened at Ford's Theater that night. President Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. Um, Robert wasn't there, but he was, he was nearby. He was at the White House. Of course, it, he had never been particularly close with his father. Uh, but his father's death affected him profoundly. He was there at the bedside when Abraham Lincoln finally died early the next morning and, and wept profusely. Yeah. After the assassination, he reached out to the new president, Andrew Johnson. He had been Lincoln's second vice president and asked if the family could remain in the, in the White House for a couple of weeks just so they could kind of get their wits about them and, and get ready to move out. And, of course, Andrew Johnson allowed that. And then in May, Robert, May of 1865, Robert Lincoln moved with his mother and his younger brother, Tad, to Chicago. Um, now, at first, he shared an apartment with his mother and brother while he was attending law school. In early 1866, he moved into an apartment of his own. He, he didn't have a really good relationship with his mother either, and just to be honest with you, Mary Todd Lincoln was probably a little crazy. She was, like I said, before the Civil War, high strung. All the tragedy she endured probably made her a little nuts. Um, so he moves into an apartment of his own in early 1866, does well in law school. He gets his law license in April of 1867. And then a year and a half later, in the fall of 1868, he married a young lady he had been courting named Mary Harlan. She was the daughter of Senator James Harlan of Iowa. And together they would eventually have three children, two daughters, and one son. Unfortunately, tragedy is going to strike the Lincoln family again in 1871 when Robert's younger brother, Tad, died at the age of 18. Mary Lincoln was already deeply disturbed over the death of her two, the two sons that had died, the three sons, really, if you go all the way back and count Eddie, um, and, of course, her husband. And she just sank into a further depression. Abraham Lincoln had always been concerned when he was alive with Mary's mental health, and it had gotten worse with every tragedy she endured. Well, in 1875, Robert made the difficult decision to have his mother committed to an insane asylum. Um, he tried to have this handled quietly to avoid embarrassment. Uh, and she was sent to a, a, a mental facility called Bellevue Place there in Illinois. And after three months, though, Mary managed to manipulate her way out of Bellevue Place. She had letters smuggled to her lawyer and her lawyer's wife, who was a personal friend of hers, complaining that Robert had treated her bad and alleging that the only reason he had her locked up is that he wanted to take control of her finances. That, that was the only reason he had her committed. At the same time she wrote letters to her lawyer and her lawyer's wife, she also wrote letters to the editor of the Chicago Times with the same allegations, and, and those were published. So the director of this, this mental facility, Bellevue Place, He's got all this negative publicity coming at him. He doesn't want to deal with this negative publicity, so he just he says, she's fine. He declared her well enough to leave and go live with her sister in Springfield, Illinois, which is what she wanted to do anyway, so he, he let her go. But all of this made Robert look really bad. Um, 
she never really forgave him for this incident. They never really fully reconciled. Um, you know, I, in addition to being, I think, a, a little off, she's. you can also see she's very manipulative. I, I think that's just my personal opinion from this. But but all this made Robert look really bad, and there are a lot of people that, that never really trust him because a lot of people would think who would, who would treat their mother that way. Now, in addition to being a practicing lawyer, Robert Lincoln was also very active in Republican Party politics during the late 19th century. From 1876 to 1877, he served as the town supervisor of South Chicago. That's the only elected post he ever held. Now, don't bother looking for South Chicago on a map. At the time, it was an independent city. It later was annexed by Chicago itself. In 1877, he was offered the post of a secre assistant secretary of state by Rutherford B. Hayes, the president, but he turned it down. However, after the election of 1880, President James Garfield appointed Lincoln to be his Secretary of War, and he accepted. He wouldn't be part of the Garfield administration for very long because there wasn't a very long Garfield administration. Garfield was elected in 1880, inaugurated March 4th of 1881. He had been president for roughly four months when in July of 1881, he was assassinated by a man named Charles Guiteau at a train station in Washington, D.C., Robert Lincoln was present for that assassination. He was an eyewitness to it. He watched Guiteau um, shoot President Garfield. It's the first assassination he was physically present for, but the second one he was nearby and was connected to the people he knew. I mean, most of us, I think, can go our whole lives and say that nobody we know has ever been assassinated. It, at this point, Robert Lincoln's not even 40 years old yet, and two people he personally knows has already, have already been assassinated. That's, that's pretty tragic. Now, he continued as Secretary of War for Garfield's successor, his Vice President Chester A. Arthur, and he would serve the entire four-year term as Secretary of War. Um, and then from 1889 to 1893, he served as the U.S. Ambassador to Great Britain under President Benjamin Harrison, who himself was the grandson of a former president. Uh, his time as the Ambassador to the Court of St. James, which is what they called that diplomatic post, was not a particularly happy one. Uh, it was while he was in London that his only son, Abraham, named after his father, but they, 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 everybody called him Jack, died at the age of, of 16. Just, again, continuing the tragedy of the Lincoln family. And with Jack, the Lincoln name uh, essentially died, at least through Abraham's line, as none of Robert, Robert's brothers survived past the age of 18, and his only two other remaining children were daughters. You know? After Benjamin Harrison was defeated by Democrat Grover Cleveland in 1892, of course, the Democrat's not going to keep a Republican like Lincoln in a, in a diplomatic position. He, he retired from public life, and he went back to his private practice as a lawyer. And this is when he, he actually starts to make some money. During the 1880s, Robert Lincoln served as general counsel to the Pullman Palace Car Company, which was based in Chicago. Lincoln was the company's main lawyer, during the disastrous Pullman strike of 1894. In 1894, uh, workers at the Pullman factory went on strike. It got nasty. President Cleveland had to call the National Guard out. Uh, or troops had to be called out to put this, this thing down. Um, George Pullman, the owner of the company, was supposed to testify during the subsequent trial in 1895. So when all this went to court and people were being trialed, Pullman was supposed to testify Lincoln apparently used his connections to have this subpoena quietly dismissed. George Pullman had been subpoenaed. Um, Lincoln was able to pull some strings, bring Pullman in to talk to the judge privately and not have him testify in, in open court. When Pullman died in 1897, Lincoln was made the president of the company. So he, he would then be president of the Pullman Palace Car Company. Uh, in 1911, he became chairman of the board of Pullman Palace Car Company, a position he held until 1922. His work with Pullman made him very wealthy. He made a lot of money as the lead counsel and then, of course, eventually as the uh, president of the company. So early in the first decade of the 20th century, he had enough money to purchase some land near Manchester, Vermont, and he built a home called Hildeen. He also owned a home in Washington, D.C. and owned an apartment in Chicago as well. So he's able to kind of expand his lifestyle a little bit by that point. Now, 
Shortly before he bought Hilding, Robert Todd Lincoln was present at another presidential assassination. In September of 1901, he had been invited by President William McKinley to attend the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. Now, he wasn't an eyewitness to this, but he was right outside the building when McKinley was shot by an anarchist named Leon Shogos. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a weird Eastern European name. Um, so he heard the shots, and he, so there, again, there's three people that he personally knows who have been assassinated. That's something that doesn't happen a lot. And, and he realized how weird this was. Uh, several years later, Robert Lincoln was invited to go to some other presidential function, and he refused to go, and, and this is what he said, quote, no, I'm not going, and they better not ask me because there is a certain fatality about presidential functions when I'm present, end quote. Uh, he did attend the dedication of the Lincoln Memorial in 1922, so he was there to see the memorial dedicated to his father in Washington, D.C. That was his last public appearance. He died quietly at his home in Vermont, Hildeen, on July 26th of 1926, shortly before his 83rd birthday. His doctor listed the cause of death as arteriosclerosis. So while his life was very momentous and he had a lot of important positions, in a lot of ways, Robert Todd Lincoln's life was tragic. He was the only one of his siblings to live to old age. He lost a son at 16. By the way, his last surviving grandchild Robert Todd Lincoln Beckwith died in 18, excuse me, 1985 without children. So there are no living descendants of Abraham Lincoln today. None of the Lincoln family is alive today. Robert was also very frustrated at having it being overshadowed by his famous father. And he once remarked toward the end of his life, and I'll, I'll just read you the exact quote. He said, quote, No one wanted me for Secretary of War, for Minister to England, for President of the Pullman Company. They wanted Abraham Lincoln's son. End quote. But despite that, he was very active in Republican politics for, for many years, uh, was highly sought after. A few, a couple of times they talked about running him for president, and he absolutely wanted no part of that. He wouldn't do that. But he was consequential in this country's government, and of course today is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Hope you enjoyed this edition of Dr. Will's History Road Trip. See you on the road. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Dr. Will's History Road Trip. If you like what I'm doing and want to continue following, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification button so you'll get updates when I post new content. Also, please consider supporting me via PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App. Your support will enable me to go to interesting places and film them and talk about them with you. Feel free to suggest locations that you might like to see me visit in the comments below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the road.